Ka te te nga tātou e tautoko anei ngā me i kwa me ia o tino nei rā māua te tū nei ki mui a koutou, te nga koutou, kia ra ui ui tātou. I'm Che Wilson, I wear the skirt. This is Missy, she wears the pants. <laughs> and so I'm the rāpaki wearing fella um, who is always surprised at how colonised Tiwi Māori are. Why are you being an islander? Why are you trying to be Scottish? When actually, e pai anā hau. Tēnā tātou. <laughs> ah, tēnā nō tātou, tēnā tātou i runga i tēnei kaupapa whakahirihiri i roto i tēnei ao hurihuri. Uh, e tautou kua anā hau i ngā mihi kua mihia, uh, i ngā kōrero kua kōrero tia. Uh, he, nei he uri o Ngāti Manyopoto, uh, Ngāti Rārua, Tainui o Tainui, Ngāti Koata, um, Ngāti Toa, <laughs> uh, me Ngāti Parau. <laughs> <laughs> Ko Riria Te Kanua Hau, ki te nuinga, I've got a really tūturu name, it's Missy. <laughs> so, um, look, awesome to be here this morning and te puta, te puta whakatupu, this is awesome, um, totally awesome, thank you for bringing a lot of our mates together and it's been so long, so long that Rachel's hair's now growing. <laughs> um, my part of our kōrero today is... It really draws on my observations, um, partly my day-to-day -day mahi at KPMG, where I've been for seven years, but probably more, um, and to a larger extent, from growing up as a kid around tables, sometimes with mum, sometimes with dad, mostly in school holidays when Nan, when my mum needed a break from me. Um, so it's really more my kid life, but also my own experiences and around different tables, and those tables aren't the moana table or the you know, some of, the, some of the bigger tables, these are probably more what Joe's talking about, sort of local, um, local and closer to home. So the first one of those was, uh, I, held it for, I was there for about 17 years, and I joined about two years um, after I finished university, and so I was bright-eyed, I was bushy-tailed, I was armed with my degree, and, and I was... And a good-looking boyfriend too, then. <laughs> <laughs> And I had a few years accounting experience under my belt, so you're like, all good. I was the only one under 40. Um, the rest were probably 50s and 60s. And the incorporation, as it was, was probably making about 50K a year. And there were seven board members trying to make 50K. So, you know, that gives you some stuff. But some of the stuff was really eye-opening, you know, come through my ethics and professional stuff and all of that. But. Um, we had one who drove hundreds of kilometres, so we're in Raglan. The closest place is Hamilton. This fellow went to Taumatu, Matamata, Morrinsville, clocking up kilometres to go and buy a stove. Two words, mileage claim. So, you know, that stuff really <sighs> challenged. You know, I'm young, I'm the youngest, I am the kōtiro, and you've got this kind of behaviour going on, and you had to kind of... You either sucked it up, or you did something about it. So I dealt with it, um, but Kate's caught it all this morning about the lack of maturity, completely and totally resonated with me. Um, I saw the world then as clearly black and white, we're accountants, there's a right and there's a wrong. And while I still think the outcome was right, the approach was pretty blunt. Now some might think nothing much has changed since then, but I assure you, and my husband better assure you, that it has. <laughs> <laughs> so the university degree, um, the accounting experience, that was really helpful from a technical standpoint, but completely useless in helping me um, navigate board dynamics in a hapu-owned business. And so lesson number one, a degree and working day-to-day -day with really clever people helps, but it's not enough. Welcome to Māori Governance. Now, I know some of you have been part of really cool development programs um, along the way, and your experience might be different to uh, the slightly fictional, slightly true um, account that I might share with you. But this is really for those who probably haven't had that fortune, and it might go something like this, and I'll read it. So you join your board, you receive a big folder or induction manual, you eagerly read through everything, trying to get yourself up to speed before... Um, before your onboard, onboarding process. That might involve a porphyry, so tick, um, and you might be fortunate enough to share, to share that experience 
with other people in the organisations, but it's not necessarily going to be the board members you're about to spend a few years working alongside. They've already been through this. You show up the night before your first board meeting, you have a lovely kai with your fellow board members, and then the next morning, you're formally welcomed to the table and you get into the bizzo. And over many meetings, you start to build um, your confidence, you start to understand, um, you're growing, your understanding grows, um, but you do notice a few things. And so there's multiple schools of thought among this rōpū that's meant to be sort of working in the best interests of our people together. Um, everyone's not on the same page, and it may even be worse when you've got double digits in your board and the size of your boards. Um, you could have a few hapu forming when the board's so big. So you're all on the same waka, the paddles aren't the same size, the pace is all over the place, and some aren't even paddling. So that's just a reality. Um, there's conversations outside the board meeting that you have, and they reveal really sort of cool, important thinking and contributions um, that would have been useful in the meeting. You know, you can discover really valuable skills and experience that's not surfacing inside your board because either people are too quiet or there's just not the environment there. You're a little bit puzzled sometimes around where people are coming from. And on some boards, this pet hate, uh, there's a hesitancy to make decisions and often a desire to take something back to the people, the same ones who voted to put you there in the first place, so we end up going like this. Conversely, you see decisions being made based on personal opinion, um, not always backed up with strong logic and rationale, and sometimes there's strong reactions to reasonable questions that are being posed. Um, there's a reluctance to tackle hard issues, and sometimes there's groupthink or follow the leader. And I've been in a case where, you know, I was the only one on the other side. They followed the leader. Everyone went around, and then the leader jumped ship. So you're sitting there going, you know, the group think is real. The followship is real, even when it's not. But I think some of the, um, some of the worst things is you could find yourself observing, subjected to, and eek. Uh, potentially involved in some individual behaviour that's quite unacceptable, but it actually seems okay to those that are around the table with you. Cue the banging of the table, shouting, slamming the laptop shut and walking out, intimidation, threats and phone calls swearing down the phone line because you've found out certain things. So I just want to share these with you because it's quite serious, but um, it's real and it's happened. Um, the hui finishes. You head home, come back and repeat the process next month, maybe not the table banging. So while those might be real situations I've encountered, and perhaps some of you, I will say that those are situations that are played out at governance table in a Māori setting. But I dare say it, that happens to happen outside of Māori settings too. So it's not our problem, that is imported behaviour and is not ours. So that is not Māori governance in my view, it's the opposite, and it's important we don't confuse that with Māori governance. So what is it? So for me, it's really about um, operating in accordance with the values that reflect us as a people, but I personally don't like using the tangas, because the tangas are on walls everywhere, <laughs> and yet you see how people behave at odds with them, so I think that's kind of almost like a bit of a waste of time. Um, but we could take a minute to reflect, and I'll just, let's see if this works. There we go. Um, just reflect on how life might have been if we took the time to build the relationships among us, to understand each other properly, to build the respect among us because we know what each brings. I think we can step forward and step back because we know what others bring, and we can operate as a genuine unit. We're collectively responsible for things. And if we cannot do that properly, we're just wasting time. And we're wasting precious time that our whānau don't have. Um, so those are some of the five R's. If we come across, um, so the five R's came from my involvement in Amor, but they also came from Iowa. And I want to mihi to Katie and Bentham for bringing that kaupapa to our shores. And so many of us have been privileged. But there's also a few C's. So these ones, um, I think they'll come from, so first of all, there's the care and the cultivation. And the key, I think we all know, you know, there's the loving side and the aroha side and the expression of aroha, but some of that care is actually exposing people to particular situations that allow them to build the resilience. And it's hard, 
you may not agree, it's the tough feedback you get that you really disagree with and you have a violent reaction to, but you, inevitably you look back a few years later and you go, that was actually right. The cultivation is about how we actually create the space and, and keep that um, intergenerational cycle moving. So how do we reach into others and provide them and expose them in a way? This one here, you may, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm talking about conviction. So this is out of a CV, and a CV that was provided to him in the Ministry of Social Welfare back in the day. And this is about someone standing in their own truth. So school attended, conditioned, key word, at the British Colonial School District High School from 1930 to 1942. Educated at the punga houses of my tupuna. Education for her is not from our schools. Work history. Say it like it is, team. War. She didn't fluff it up. She just said, this is war, and this is in the CV. Manufacturing weapons for the war until employed in the post office in 1944. And the conviction to always be on because you believe in something. So this is hobbies. <laughs> Music, politics, social work. Unemployment issues, land consultant. Work, work voluntary in developing employment programs, social welfare programs for the unwanted of our area. Those are her hobbies. So that is my nana. <laughs> so I want to go back to what Joe just said earlier. And he talked about the tribe in England. And is that how they treated their people? And when I think about that, I think those are the values that we've been told to adopt. And Missy shared the, the R's and the C's. But actually, it's got to be in your puku. It's got to be in the puku, otherwise it's all bullshit. It's just flash words on a flash strategy and a really flash PowerPoint or a really flash booklet. But if it's not guiding you when you have to make a decision, it's all hote. And what results is a koroirangi effect, a whirlpool of indecision where you use excuses like Missy said, oh no, we've got to go back to the people. Oh no, we've got to go back to the people. No, that's just you covering your butt to get your next vote. <laughs> or, well, I'm going to go to the judge. I'm going to go to the Māori Land Court. Who said that the bloody judge has the mana for our together? Who said? I'm not talking about individuals, I'm talking about a system. You know, you know, who said that that system knows us? And so what happens is we create this whirlpool when what we need is a bit of nuts and fortitude. Because we, our egos, we all have egos, and our egos keep talking to us. They keep talking to us, yeah, yeah, you're the man. But wait on. What's going to get us to the best place? And so we have to do our homework and we have to minimise the cacophony of modernity that Joe refers to earlier. Minimising that cacophony, that noise, because it creates bloody Hollywood movies and results in indecision. It's a stalemate of indecision. Missy does a lot of work uh, in that space helping, in, helping the boards. I do a lot of work mentoring people. Possibly do too much of it for free. <laughs> um, but what it does do is it gives us a stalemate and we've just got to get to the next place. So the next place potentially is finding models that can work for us. And Huirangi Waikere Pudu refers to the kupu A as in potential. A tua, the potential from beyond which you draw, draw upon to create you into an atua for that moment when you're invoking them. Therefore, ariki is the potential that you go like this to allow others to step forward. And as you do that, we then need roles where people's attributes are respected, but more importantly, we move away from the tohunga space because at the moment we're in the tohunga space, which is all about experts. We need accountants, we need lawyers. No, that's only one of the expertise we need. We also, we also need wisdom, which is reflected in kaumatua. We need vision, which is reflected in matakite. We need a doer or a people, a doer which is reflected in toa. 
and we need dot connectors, people who are people whisperers, as well as somebody who, is, who has a connection to the other side, the ahurewa. And we look, if we look at those attributes, we look at those skills, rather than just lawyers and accountants, and yes, I married an accountant, <laughs> and I failed in law, <laughs> but if we think more broadly and stop letting the Pākehā tell us what's best for us. Don't get me wrong, I think the more we did do psychometric testing that will help us better understand each other because our board roles are often very transactional. Oh, kia ora kaz, see you next month. Oh, kia ora kaz, see you next month. So if you have an argument with them, it takes a month to see them again and you don't want to discuss it. Whereas when you see each other all the time, you have to discuss it. So a heap of challenges that we're going through. In the afternoon, Joe must be a, a pretty serious session. <laughs> <laughs> going to keep you all awake, hopefully. <laughs> but if we have these attributes and these skills, that can take us to another place where we start to go back to the future. Okay. <laughs> And you've just got to make it work. You've got to use different things. So you've got to make sure that you've got the data, which is the head stuff. You've got to make sure that you've got the stories that can connect people, which is the heart and the why, and use your puku for the radar. You know, in our bodies, there is an internal antennae. It's knowing where yours is so that you, you know when you're in the shit or not. Because if you can use that, then that's going to keep you way more safe than doing this course and that course. Those courses will help you with the head, the head, but the heart and the puku will take you to another place. So um, I think the takeaways, our KFC McDonald's that we leave you with today, um, is to think about the entity's role as a spoke and not the hub. You know, each entity is all about them and their people, but the people are the same people. So think about yourself as a part of the equation when you're in an entity and not it be the centre of the world. Um, invest in building the relationships at the governance level, as a board, as a team, so that you can work together and understand a collective purpose and have the same size paddles, paddle at the same pace and have everyone paddling. Um, avoid the kororangi and make a decision, nothing worse than indecision. We'll, uh, we just keep wasting time. Um, when we talk about, you know, is it representation, is it skill, we'll go for attributes. Think about the Araki model and how we might start to think about that and how that works in our organisations. And finally, um, remember you can do anything that you want, but it's pretty hard to decide if you, if you want to do everything. So you can do anything, but you just can't do everything. So you're not the New Zealand government, you can't do it all, just focus, make a choice. Kilda. 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 Kilda.